Hey guys, so I want to talk about something today that I feel like it's really important um, to get the message out and it's something that um, it's been on my mind for quite a while so I'm really happy I can finally get, uh, make a video now and talk about it and that's uh, telepathy and uh, how that happens and what it is etc. Before I get into telepathy I just want to um, quickly go over some changes I made like as you can see behind me here um, Got a new shelf, you know, um, just kind of drill it in the wall and it's got these little wooden planks so I can display more stones and um, got the sphere right here in the middle and uh, all sorts of stuff around here. A beautiful piece of amethyst right there and, um, you know, so I get to show off a little more stones now. So <laughs> that's always fun. Um, <laughs> also got a new video camera. Uh, the camera that, that you guys are, look, are viewing this video from now, it's, it's a new camera. My, um, you know, I, I was being told I needed to have two cameras. Uh, for quite a while now and I, I kind of held off on it you know camera gear is kind of expensive and uh, it's a funny thing uh, my, my camera that I was formerly vlogging with this is the camera that I, that I vlogged with for quite a while not only did I vlog with this I also took photos I, I did everything on this camera it's a neat little Canon mirrorless camera very small compact body you know that's the whole idea for mirrorless cameras is it's in between a hybrid hybrid DSLR you know point and shoot camera so you can get a lot out of a, a small package and that's what this camera's, you know, really um, taking care of me in, in my vlogs for quite some time now. But recently, it, it crapped out on me, and I had to send it back to Canon to get it repaired. And there was a whole mess behind that. And um, anyway, so long story short, you know, I went out and got a got an actual camcorder. So you know, I have a little remote now. I can, you know, zoom in. Here we go. <laughs> you know, zoom out. Um, so yeah, and also getting my business going. I. Um, uh, officially started my my uh, consulting business FC uh, spiritual consulting FC just my initials you know just like my mineral store on Etsy FC minerals you know so it's just I'm using my initials for it and um, you know it's got my name on it right but it's it's not about me it's about it's about the message it's about helping other people it's just got my name because I'm a sole proprietor I'm a I'm a I'm a you know single one man kind of uh, you know show here so. That's why, and uh, got everything, you know, f finalized and all that, and so it, it's really, you know, um, moving forward here, which is good. Um, so, wanted to just point that out there, and uh, you may see some changes here, you know, changes here and with the stones, changes on my website. Um, I'm still working out everything uh, right now. And so, anyway, um, I really want to, whoa, that was crazy. I just, something just popped in. It was like... Uh, Beautiful uh, colors, green, red. Um, somebody's coming in saying hi. Um, hmm. I really want to get into the topic of this video now, uh, which is telepathy. Um, it's something that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time, and I've, I've mentioned it on and off on previous videos, I know, and um, especially my last video talking about ETs and a lot of stuff going on with ETs, and right now is a, is a great time to kind of you know talk about telepathy and 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 what it means and what you know how how, how it functions like what it means for us and uh um how it's important to actually work on it now and uh, i want to share some personal experiences i've had with telepathy as well you know i'll talk about kind of what what how everything happens and also personal experiences i've had you know because I've, I've had some quite strong interactions with ets so uh with uh via telepathy so, you know, telepathy is the universal language, right? E.T. human telepathy, E.T. telepathy. Uh, it is the universal language out in the cosmos, in the stars. It is what everybody speaks. It is how everybody communicates, you know. Um, when a uh, when a Greek meets a uh, Norwegian um, hiking in the Swiss Alps, how do they communicate? What's the common denominator there? English, right? A lot of uh, countries here in uh, Europe and uh, you know America and English is quite diverse the most diverse language and then you have you know Spanish and Chinese but English is 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 our common de denominator when 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 we speak with uh, somebody else you know from a uh, different uh, country different background you know and they have their own mother tongue and they all they all they have a secondary language which is um, typically English in, in European countries um, when a reptilian meets an antid, you know, what's their common denominator, right? How, how are they going to communicate? Because they, two different bodies here, vastly different bodies, different vocal cords, different languages, 
what are they going to, you know, how are they gonna, how are they going to communicate? Well, it's telepathy. Um, telepathy is the universal language. Um, telepathy is a nonverbal language. It's not spoken. It's it's all uh, uh, sending thoughts, uh, feelings, emotions, images, etc. That's telepathy, and uh, telepathy is a very powerful, powerful tool, and is an absolute necessity um, for us as a, as a species, as as humanity. Uh, evolves and moves on and ta- and meets our friends in space. You know that's how we're going to communicate with them. Um, it's not going to be through a verbally spoken language. It's going to be through telepathy. It's going to be telepathic, and everything about telepathy is metaphysical. It's it's a metaphysical ability that um, that these RET friends they they learn at a very young age, a uh, very 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 young age. You know when they're six and seven, they they're talking, you know, telepathically with each other. Um, for me, this, this started like, you know, it's, it's, it really started with my, because with telepathy, how it happens is it, there's two energy centers that really, um, are key in making telepathic communication happen. And it's the heart chakra or energy center and it's the pineal, uh, the pineal gland, the pineal energy field, the pineal chakra, etc. Um, but it's not so much the the physical gland itself. The physical gland of the pineal gland produces an energy field that comes out, starts uh, from the bottom of your throat and comes up all the way like a half circle to um, the forehead. That energy field, that's where the magic happens. That's where all the metaphysics, that's where the imagery happens. That's where everything happens, not the physical gland. The physical gland just produces that energy field. So, you know, and then with the heart, the heart is like a, like a bio... Um, biofeedback kind of electromagnetic biofeedback uh, mechanism kind of it the heart sends out energy and, and feelings and emotions and it also receives it so it's it's biofeedback with what, whatever you're feeling into talking to um, these two things are are what makes telepathy happen right and you got to have a strong you know you got to have be strong in both to, to really be proficient in in, in in talking via telepathy um, telepathy is it's just when, when you really start talking with it and you really start using it uh, uh, with ET friends, it's really just amazing the, the, the stuff you can communicate. You know, the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, it really is true, especially when it comes to telepathic communication with uh, ETs. Um, images get built up here in, in the pineal energy field, right? Uh, when you have, when you're being shown something metaphysically, when you're meditating or whatever you're doing, relaxing, and and sometimes you you, you get images, it gets shown right here in your pineal gland energy field. Um, whether it's whether it's somebody, a spirit guide coming in, sending a message, or ET is popping in, astral projecting to you, or the field coming in, giving you a message, you know. You can receive it in your in your pineal gland energy field, and also you can receive it with your scanner, which is remote viewing. But with telepathy, um, it doesn't involve remote viewing. It doesn't involve the scanner. It, it pretty much is exclusively pineal uh, when it comes to the imagery, and then it's heart. You know, the heart is just as important as uh, the pineal gland, if not more, in telep- when you're talking about telepathy, because the heart feels you know you you see the image you, you you get the thoughts from the other person you see the image being sent to you and the conversation's going and you're understanding that's the hypothalamus you're understanding it you know the image but you also got to feel you, you got to really put your heart out there and, and feel and and get a sense of what's being uh shown to you you know like how, how does it feel you know sad happy excited worried Cautious, like all, all these different, you know, feelings that that you you can get, you have to be able to discern that with your heart, and that's where the heart comes into play, and that's where the heart is is a very important uh, tool in t- in telepathic communication. Um, when I was uh, first doing this, uh, twenty, I believe, like 20, 20, thir- 2012, 2013, I started seeing stuff with my pineal gland. Now back then. Uh, this didn't kick in for me like it did uh, around 2016, right? Um, 2015 or mid 2015 is is summer of 2015 is when I got my energy work, my crank up uh, done by you know good friend and mentor of, of mine and you guys as well, you know Jay Jay Essex and uh, after that happened, I mean that's when everything just you know like really kicked into gear. 
Uh, but I, for like me personally, myself, um, I've been doing this. I, I've been kind of diving into metaphysical, spiritual stuff since 2011. And it was 2013 when I was meditating. And I remember 2013 when I was doing these hour-long meditations and relaxing. And it, would, it, was, it was really opening. I was opening up and then my pineal gland was opening. Because I've always had a strong pineal. But I was more of a heart, uh, a strong, a stronger in my heart back then. Um, but when I started opening up, my spirit guides started showing themselves to me. Around 2013, I, I could see the, the female, my, my female spirit guide. She just came in. I saw her big face, you know, big... Because when you when when something astral projects to you or you go to somewhere else, and you're using your pineal gland, you're astral projecting. What you're gonna see normally is a big head in, in front of your metaphysical vision. You're just gonna see a big face. Maybe sometimes you'll just see eyes. You know, it, it'll be so zoomed in, right? And when you go somewhere else, astral projecting, same thing's gonna. They're gonna see the same thing. They're gonna see you, you know, just your face, or maybe you're right up, you know, in their face, and they're just gonna see your eyes. Well, I started seeing my, my spirit guides coming to me, and, and I was using my pineal, you know, looking at them, and I could just see, you know, um, the big face and the big the big head, you know, it was really quite interesting, and um, that's when my pineal gland really started kicking in, and then around 2015, when I got cranked up, it took some time, you know, the the, the energy work, the, the, the crank up takes time to settle in and really get going, a couple months, but around 2016 is when it really kicked in, so... My first formal experience with telepathy uh, happened around 2016. Um, I would say early 2016, I believe. This this is when uh, I was sitting in my room. I was do, I was meditating. It was late at night. I, I always like to meditate at night. You know, I, I and, and people, everybody's different. You know, whenever you want to do it, I'm, it's fine. I'm not you know saying to go and do what I'm doing, but it's it's so I, I was meditating at night, and uh, it was around. Very late. It was like you know midnight, almost uh, one a.m. or something. I, I I meditated when when I was doing my you know relaxing meditation sessions. You know, I use both words words relaxing and meditation. You know I don't like to use meditation too much. It's more uh, simply put relaxing, but a deeper state of relaxing. And uh, um, I would have the room pitch black, right? Pitch black, and I would close my eyes. So complete darkness. Um, I would always do that. It, it helped me you know relax easier, but. Being that it was pitch black, I couldn't see anything. And so I remember one night I was doing it, and then all of a sudden this big head popped up right in front of me, like huge, huge uh, um, head. It was reptilian, a very reptilian uh, uh, head, face, everything. Just I could, and I, I had such high definition, uh, such high clarity um, when when I was looking at this person. It was uh, female reptilian, female Anunnaki. Very big, muscular uh, uh, individual she was, and most Anunnaki are very, very you know muscular bodies or very advanced bodies. And so I was looking at her, her face, and I saw her the, I saw the grooves and the bumps, um, kind of a like a like a bumpy, groovy rep, reptile skin texture, you know. And uh, um, her eyes were, were, were smaller uh, compared to the size of her body, um, and her mouth. Oh my gosh, the um, uh, there you know we have relatively small mouths compared to rep reptilians their, their mouth actually opens all the way back up here to their jaw i mean it, it opens that wide and so looking at her and she's doing this to me she's opening and closing her mouth like 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 you know open close open close like ah you know and like she would open her mouth really wide and i could see her teeth i mean she had this these like super shark uh shark super sharp razor you know sharp like shark teeth almost very you know the carnivores um uh, so but i mean i was just looking at all the details i was like holy crap you know like what does she want she and she was quite aggressive you know my heart was feeling into the situation while while she was and she was here for about 10 20 seconds just constantly and so i was like the heck you know what the hell you know what's what's uh the, the feeling was very urgent. I mean, rep reptilian, Anunnaki reptilians are quite aggressive. Reptilians are an aggressive species. Like, whatever they do, good or bad, they're doing it aggressively. And that's just who they are. It's natural for them um, to be aggressive uh, in whatever they're doing. And so she wanted to she was, she was wanted to talk to me very urgently. And she was quite aggressive about it. She um, she just kept doing it. And then I, I you know, I, I, I was, since that, that was my first formal experience, I, I really didn't know what, this meant opening and closing your mouth. Later, later on, I, I realized that meant I want to talk. 
you know, that, that's, a, that's what it means when you see that. Um, it means they want to talk. So, you know, mouth, verb, you know, like it's, it's, it's telepathy, but you're sending images. And that was the image and the message behind that image was, hey, I want to talk. So I, I didn't really get the message. And after about 20 seconds of watching or doing this, I kind of got annoyed. You know, I was like, what is, what's going on? You know, and so I, I powered up my energy and I, I sent a thought to her. I said, look, like, just stop. Like, I was just like, just stop. You know, I don't know what you... And she stopped. And it was the coolest thing because, like, it was real time. The moment I, I, I had the thought and I sent it to her, like, just stop. You know, stop doing this. Um, she stopped. And it was real time. It was the coolest thing. And so after that, um, I got out of that meditation. And then, and then a, um, a couple weeks after... I, I went back in my head and I was looking for her because I realized, then I realized, oh crap, you know, that meant she wanted to talk. I screwed up because I, I didn't know that at the time. So, I, and then I real I put two and two together and then I realized, okay, she had an urgent message and I, I, I could, I didn't get it. So a couple weeks later, I went back in my head and was relaxing and I was looking for her. So at this time I went to her for, you know, she was actually in a trip chair the first time she came to me. She was in a generator, a trip chair. A trip chair is like a, um, a device that amplifies your metaphysical abilities and makes you a hell of a lot stronger. Um, and because she was in in this chair, that's why I could. That's why she came here so strong in such a strong presence, and uh, that's why. That's also why I could see her really, really clearly. So she. Um, I, I, a couple weeks later, I I'm I asked to protect her. I find her. Um, she she's in a base. I found her uh, like it's like her living quarters, but. I found the location of, of the base she was at, and it was out of uh, Alaska. Um, if you look at the state of Alaska, and you look at where the Aleutian Islands, the chain of islands are, in the su- you know southern tip part of Alaska, and it kind of goes out like that. Um, if you go south of that, out into the ocean, and you go way, 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 way underground, that's where she was. She was living over there in, in a base down there. You got to, you know, keep in mind the Anunnaki, the reptilian Anunnaki that, that controlled this planet, that controlled all the governments and all the, you know, big players and billionaires, etc. They've been here for millions, 10 million years, almost, and uh, more, more, actually. So they've had a lot of time. They came into starships. They've had a lot of time to... to settle in and burl in and burl and build bases here and there you know we, we hear about certain bigger bases because that's where the bigger clans are just like how we have central hubs up here on the surface you know like big cities like new york los angeles or london paris uh, uh shanghai whatever you know like just like how we have these central hubs of, of big major cities they have that as well and uh underground and that's and that's the, the places we hear about you know the the clan the factions here and there you know in new york and california and, and arkansas and arizona you know and and also out in russia and, and there's many you know central hubs where the anunnaki are but there's also smaller living areas where, where, where you know they just live they live they go to school they study they have all that you know um so they're there doing that, and there she was in the trip chair. She saw me when I was relaxing, meditating, and they have technology that can look, that can see your energy. When you're relaxing, you're meditating, you're opening up, you're astral projecting. They have scanners, satellite scanners that can actually read that, that can watch you, watch your energy when you go out and do something, or or watching you open up, powering up. Like they they can see all of that. So there this uh there she was this female Anunnaki reptilian looking at me and came to me and and so a couple weeks later I went back to her I asked her projected to her with my pineal gland I said look I I went and when I found her I was like look you know like I'm I'm sorry um I didn't get the message but I, I want to talk now so I said um so I was just basically like what's up you know and and I sent that to her and um and she turned around she looked at me and, and uh caught her uh, luckily I caught her when she wasn't too busy so she could talk to me you know talking telepathy with somebody is no different than talking with somebody in person sometimes they're too busy to talk you know so but but luckily i caught her when she was you know free and she showed me this image so i saw her in my metaphysical vision and then when when i gave that intention like all right let's talk show me what you want you know tell me when i when i gave that intention i sent it out to her she showed me an image of a big humongous drill like a big drill digging through tunneling through the earth like just you know, just just making huge holes, burrowing, just 
tr- like holes like like the the, the size of uh, uh, semi trucks, you know, just but like nothing, like it's just moving through the earth like nothing, like like it's just tearing stuff up, like like it's like it's nothing, and uh, it, it it has it was electromagnetic in nature. This this drill, this piece of technology, and it was really screwing up all the uh, uh, natural environments, uh, uh, you know, underneath and, and, and above it. And I was getting a, a location. I was like, all right, where is this happening? Where is this drilling being done? And I was, I was actually shown, you know, she was showing me like it was, it was being uh, done near where she was. I, I was getting British Columbia, you know, like uh, when you when you look at British Columbia, it's very mountainous. There's a lot of beautiful nature, but it's also very remote, you know. And uh, it, it was out in northern BC near Alaska is where I was seeing all this crazy stuff happening. So. She had a strong concern about the environment, about the nature. She cared a lot about, you know, Mother Earth, the nature, and, and the environment. And she was worried at, at the impact that, that this drill would have. And and because she was kind of confined to her quarters, you know, they're, they're, um, the only way they can reach out to people is men physically. So she caught me that day, that night, when I was meditating and came to me and, and talked, was talking to me. And that was you know, wanted to let me know about that. So that was one of my first profound experiences for, with telepathic communication with like an ET race or somebody else. And uh, for, fortunate enough for me, the, the other person, the reptilian, Anunnaki reptilian, she was in the trip chair, a generator. She was being uh, powered up to her, her metaphysical abilities were being amplified. So it was easier for me. And I noticed that when you're talking with uh, somebody that's, that's telepath or are you trying to engage in a telepathic communication with somebody it's always so much easier when you're talking with somebody that's um that's a very 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 uh proficient at it you know they're good at it and b they're strong and and, and c that they're, they're 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 in a trip chair i don't know it's like um I, you don't really need the trip chair but if you're talking to somebody that's better than you at it it's always better for you because it'll come easier the images will come easier um and we're all novices in this, you know, myself included, because, you know, we're, we're compared to ETs anyway. We are just, kin- we're, we're in kindergarten, just, just barely learning about metaphysical stuff. You know, they, they have different techniques and, and, and studies, and, and, you know, they've been doing this since they were six years old. They are very, very well, um, very, very, very well, uh, you know, equipped with, with doing this stuff. And they're just very good at it. And we're not so much, so... Um, it's easier for us when we talk with somebody, uh, when we telepathically talk with somebody that's got more experience than us, and it, it, the images become clearer. Uh, so that was one of my first profound experiences. And after that, I was talking with people quite often, and still do now. You know, like uh, once or twice or three, four times a week, um, somebody comes in, I start talking with them. Sometimes I want to talk, sometimes they're busy, sometimes I go to the ship out in uh, 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 the Jupiter Saturn space station out there, which I want to get into another story I had. Um, or I have of of a, a experience of, uh, I had up there talking with somebody, uh, telepathically talking, and uh, sometimes I go out there and I just talk with people, you know. So now I'm pretty adept at it. But uh, back in 2017, I think this is about a year after, I was um, I went out to to talk to to uh, ETs on the uh, Jupiter Saturn space station. There's a big UFO, a big craft that that floats in between Jupiter and Saturn. Actually, right now it's closer to Saturn. Um, and it's more of like a station where different races come together and, and talk and, and gather. It's like a meeting point. You know, uh, the alliance that's, that's going to help us here on this planet, they're stationed out there. And uh, I went over there just to talk and I, and I ended up in, 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 in a room. And it was uh, a kid. It was a reptilian again, but it, this he was younger. He was like the equivalent of a teenager, but he was... You know, he uh, I ended up in his room somehow, and so I started telepathically talking to him, and he looked over at me, and he's just kind of excited. You know, he was kind of like giggly, kind of excited, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is new." Um, you know, I was like, "Okay, so what's he all happy and, and up about?" So I, I I I I'm looking at him, and then and then he's just got this feeling, and uh, I send uh, he he's like he wanted to show me something. He was very excited, like 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 you know somebody that really wants to show you something. You know maybe your um, friend or something got something new and, and wanted to show you something. So I was like, okay. So I, I initiated the connection with my with my pineal gland and I sent I sent him a 
a thought in my head and I put it in his head. I was like, show me, show me. And he, and the next thing I know, he, he stepped back and uh, held out this device. It was like a handheld metal uh, rod. It looked like this is a flashlight, okay? So it looked like this and then just like that, a handle. And then he presses a button. Next thing I know, I see these prongs pop out like a bezel popping out like a square shaped frame bezel. It was metal, like a alien metal. And uh, it was projecting a, a hologram, um, like a tablet. Um, and it was like something, something like a scanner. Like you can look back in time with that thing. I mean, you could, you could do so much with that thing. Um, you could like, it was seriously like, like, like a, a, a piece of technology, a portable piece of tech that could metaphysically look back in time and, and, and even look forward and scan, like, you know, you could do amazing things. And I was like, Whoa, that's really cool. And he was showing me all this and I was seeing all this in my pineal gland. Just, you know, I could see the silhouette of him. Like, uh, uh, his his body features everything just it was so cool so cool and then and then I was like uh, uh, I was like show me so he, he was showing that to me and then I I was like wow that's really cool you know like uh, show me what I can do so he was show, doing all this stuff and then I stepped back and um I was like wow okay uh, then I was looking at his bedroom and, and he had this uh, he was showing me his mirror it's not a mirror, it's, it's a window, but it's like uh, you could see the stars. I saw Saturn, Jupiter. Um, I was looking at the sun. It was so, so cool. And uh, that was his room on that on that ship, on that UFO craft. Um, that was another profound experience, you know. I was like, I was uh, I was there, and, and I now I, I go back there quite often. I, I'm always there. And I, actually, I was I was fortunate enough to, to, to go there with... Uh, the old man, we, we were talking and we both went there at the same time, you know, we, we were um, both kind of talking to him. It was really cool. So telepathy is, is really uh, a really interesting thing. You know, um, you can also, when you're really proficient at it, uh, you can also hear, you have that clear audience, you know, um, clear audience, I think that's what it's called where you can actually go somewhere metaphysically, you can actually project somewhere, and then you can literally hear, hear, hear them in your ears or in your head. You can hear them talk, um, and, and then they can, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really, it's really, 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 really cool. And so telepathy, you know, uh, happens in with, with the pineal gland and the heart, um, but the heart is so... Believe it or not, most most people that that have a, a strong heart energy, you've actually always been somewhat telepathic, and it's through through your empathy, it's through your heart. You know, people, um, you guys that that have, uh, you know, you guys that are heart centered, heart heart based people. When you're you know when you're growing up, when you're around a lot of people, especially when you're younger, it's it's hard. Um, Heart people don't really like to be around a lot of people because then you pick up, you automatically pick up feelings, emotions, etc. from from everybody around you. It's being, it's called being, a, you know, empathic. It's a natural ability and it's a powerful ability. But more often than not, it, you know, it weighs people down and people, you know, it's it's hard to distinguish between what what's really go, you know, going on. Is it you or is it them or you know what's going on here? You, you pick up other people's feelings and emotions and sometimes they're not all good. Next thing you know, they become your own, you know, feelings and emotions and then you get blocked down. I'll tell you something, that's not a weakness, that's actually a strength. And it's a very powerful ability to, to, to have that level of empathy and, and to, to have that level of feeling of, of knowing what it's like. You're literally in their shoes feeling what they're feeling. And that's how the heart works. It's like it's a biofeedback. You feel somebody's pain you feel the suffering as if it's your very own because you actually feel what they're going through and through that comes a hell of a lot of understanding um a lot of understanding and a lot of compassion and love and uh people that that have that strong heart you know it's it's not a weakness at all it's a strength and now more than ever you can actually apply that in a in a very practical way which is telepathy um telepathy you need the heart you need to have that empathic that that ability uh to fully get a clear you know concise message when you're talking with somebody um 
I used to be like that myself when I was younger. I still, I still, I, I pick up things that I don't like, you know, and uh, it's just a natural thing of the heart. It's just like, it's like uh, you, you're constantly, you know, you're constantly on, and you go, you go in a big crowd of people, and and some, you know, people carry around baggage, good or bad, whatever it is, and, and you pick it all up, and it becomes overwhelming, and and you just want to, you know fade away and <laughs> hide in a corner and, and you know get away from all that that's how the heart you know that's how the heart works is like you're empathetic right you feel and, and a lot of times people will, will knock you down for that and, and say you're weak or something it's actually the complete opposite you're actually very powerful um, through all that comes understanding and understanding is a very very important uh, thing to have um, if you don't have the understanding it's, it's hard to do you know anything metaphysical um because when you're talking telepathy with somebody there's a lot of that going on you you have to use your heart and feel like okay you know what is the uh uh atmosphere here you know um how is this person doing and and you and through the heart and also the hypothalamus because the two are connected you can have a good discernment of what's going on uh when you get the image in your pineal gland the image comes to you and then the hypothalamus kicks in and it helps you with understanding what you see and then the heart kicks in too. You're feeling, you're feeling the, the message, right? You're feeling what's being sent. Um, it's just no different than if somebody walked up to you on the street and started shouting at you while you feel anger and aggression, right? <laughs> Versus somebody walking up to you on the street and start talking to you nicely, calmly, and you feel more calming frequencies. You know, it's no different, but telepathy is, you know, uh, more meta, much more metaphysical. Uh, it's it's using all, all your your abilities, your your heart, your hypothalamus, your pineal gland, etc. And people that have you, you guys that have had the strong heart, you guys you know will soon realize once you really start get get going here with telepathy is that what you've felt like was a weakness is actually a strength all along, and what you felt like. But that bogged you down, that, that made you depressed, well, it's actually very powerful. It's a very powerful tool. And not everybody has the ability to have, you know, that level of empathy. And it doesn't mean that somebody's better than somebody else, but it just means that, you know, you, it really is um, powerful. It just, you know, it is what it is. It, it's it's powerful. It's strong. And it's a, it's a cool thing to have. Um I you know I, I go through this stuff too. I, 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 more more than ever now, I'm, I'm sensitive to to a lot of things. Um, it doesn't bog me down because I've I've no I you know I've learned how to um, strengthen my heart, but also control it, and also know have you know better discernment, and and so things don't bug me as much. But still, I'm quite sensitive. I know. I can I feel you know I understand what's going on with certain things and I don't get everything right all the time but um, you'll find that uh, you know the uh, um, you'll be more and more accurate the more you use it the more you do it so telepathy is great uh, telepathy is awesome and telepathy is a very important uh, thing to, to begin working on here uh, especially when our friends come pop in you know um, with that being said. I'm very excited to uh, introduce a new metaphysical ability class uh, course that I'll be teaching. It'll be one-on-one, -on -one and it's telepathy. Um, it'll be called the telepathy course, and one-on-one, uh, -on -one, me and you, we're talking, and it, it, it's a it's a build-up. It, it's you know it, this is me bringing forward you know all my uh, experience and knowledge about five to six years of of all my personal experience and knowledge and gathering data forming this this class this this t telepathy course uh and it'll be one-on-one -on -one, you know hour and a half and and we're gonna go into it. i'll be talking about it and how what happens and also um in the later half it'll be interactive it'll be hands-on I'll, I'll be showing you guys going over different um, uh techniques and, and stuff to really get your telepathy uh telepathic abilities going kick in how to really you know start that conversation with somebody um so, you know, check that out. It'll be on my website, uh, link below with everything else. And uh, 
I'm excited to, to bring that forward. Now, I think it's the right time because it's something I've been planning on doing for quite some time. But, you know, I held off on it. I, it's other things I'm, I'm doing. But now it's, it's, it's a good time to, to really get stronger in, in your telepathic and also your metaphysical abilities, just everything overall. Because it's a waiting game now for us and for the ETs. The ETs want to come in and, and pop in and they really want to just, you know, they're ready. They're ready to go. You know, they, they, they're all planned, all set, ready to go. They're just waiting. It's a waiting game. We're all waiting for big changes to happen before that can happen. And, and so what can we do while we wait? We can get stronger. We can we can work on our abilities. So when they get here, you know, it's easier for, for us to communicate with them. Um, anyway, um, that's about it. I, uh, I don't think I have much else. Um, telepathy is really cool. I... I've had numerous, you know, the, the, the two uh, examples that I offer, those those are some of my more profound experiences, you know, and, and they were early on, too. Um, now I, I, I can just, you know, it's much easier for me now than, than it was, but still, it's it's really cool looking back and uh, um, talking with people telepathically. You know, sometimes I, see, I, I go and talk with somebody and they don't want to talk with, oh, just go like this. I'll see them going, waving at me, saying hi. Mostly Sepolians, and when this is whenever I go on the ships, you know, uh, uh, astral projecting on the ships. So that's it, guys. Um, you know, check out my uh, website if you want. I'll be making changes on there, and uh, you know, got my business thing going. So also, I have more stones up on my stone shop. Uh, check that out as well. Um, stone energy helps with telepathy as well. A lot of stones that help with the pineal gland help with telepathy, and so. Uh, that's about it guys I'll talk to you guys soon